Revolutionary Letters by Diane De Prima. Number one, I have just realized that the stakes are myself. I have no other ransom money, nothing to break or barter but my life. My spirit measured out in bits, spread over the roulette table. I recoup what I can, nothing else to shove under the nose of the maitre de jeu, nothing to thrust out the window, no white flag, this flesh all I have to offer to make the play with, this immediate head, what it comes up with, my move. As we sliver over this go board, stepping always, we hope, between the lines. Revolutionary letter number two, the value of an individual life, a credo they taught us to instill fear and inaction. You only live once. A fog in our eyes, we are endless as the sea, not separate. We die a million times a day, we are born a million times. Each breath, life and death. Get up, put on your shoes, get started. Someone will finish. Tribe and organism, one flesh. Breathing joy as the stars breathe destiny down on us. Get going, join hands. See to business. Thousands of sons will see to it when you fall. You will grow a thousand times in the bellies of your sisters. Revolutionary letter number three. Store water. Make a point of filling your bathtub at the first news of trouble. They turned off the water in the fourth ward for a whole day during the Newark riots. Or better yet, make a habit of keeping the tub clean and full when not in use. Change this once a day. It should be good enough for washing, flushing toilets when necessary, and cooking in a pinch. But it's a good idea to keep some bottled water handy too. Get a couple of five gallon jugs and keep them full for cooking. Store food, dry stuff like rice and beans stores best, goes farthest. Salt, very important. It's health. It's health and energy healing too. Keep a couple pounds sea salt around and because we're spoiled, some tins, tuna, etc. to keep up morale. Keep up the sense of balanced diet, protein intake. Remember the stores may be closed for quite some time. The trucks may not enter your section of the city for weeks. You can cool it, you can cool it indefinitely. With 20 pounds brown rice, 20 pound whole wheat flour, 10 pounds cornmeal, 10 pounds good beans, kidney or soy, five pounds sea salt, two quarts good oil, dried fruit and nuts, add nutrients and a sense of luxury to this diet. A squash or coconut in a cool place in your pad will keep six months. Remember, we are all used to eating less than the average American and take it easy before we ever notice we're hungry, the rest of the folk will be starving, used as they are to meat and fresh milk daily, and help will arrive until the day no help arrives, and then you're on your own. Hoard matches. We aren't good at rubbing sticks together anymore. A tinderbox is useful if you can work it. Don't count on gas stove, gas heater, electric light. Keep hibachi and charcoal, charcoal starter, a help. Kerosene lamp and candles. Learn to keep warm with breathing. Remember the blessed American habit of bundling. Revolutionary letter number four. Left to themselves, people grow their hair. Left to themselves, they take off their shoes. Left to themselves, they make love, sleep easily, share blankets, dope and children. They are not lazy or afraid. They plant seeds, they smile, they speak to one another. The word coming into its own touch of love on the brain, the ear. 
We return with the sea, the tides. We return as often as leaves, as numerous as grass, gentle, insistent. We remember the way our babes toddle barefoot through the cities of the universe. Revolutionary letter number five. At some point you may be called upon to keep going for several days without sleep. Keep some ups around to be. Liz, if you're here, you can just jump in. Clear headed, avoid come down as much as possible. Take vitamin B along with amphetamines. Try powdered guarana root available at herb drugstores. It is an up used by Peruvian mountain folk. Tastes like mocha, bitter, can be put in tea, will clear your head, increase oxygen supply, keep you going past amphetamine wooziness. At some point you may have to crash under tension. Keep some downs on hand, you may have to cool out sickness or freak out or sorrow. Keep some downs on hand. I don't mean tranquilizers, ye old fashioned sleeping pill. Sleep heals heads, heals souls. Chloral, hydrate, Mickey, Finn. One of the best, but nembutyl, etc. Okay, in a pinch, remember no liquor with barbiturates. At some point, you will need painkillers, Darvon, as glorified shit. Stash some codeine and remember it's about five times more effective if taken with aspirin. Ups, downs, and painkillers are the essence. Antibiotics for extreme infections, any good wide spectrum one will do. Avoid penicillin, too many allergies, Speaking of which, cortisone is good for really bad attacks. Someone who freaks out asthma style or with hives. Use all these as little as possible. Side effects multifarious and they cloud the brain. Tend to weaken the body and obscure judgment. Ginseng tea, ginger compresses, sea salt. Prayer and love are better healers, easier come by, save the others. For life and death trips, you will know when you see one. Revolutionary note number six. Avoid the folk who find Bonnie and Clyde too violent who see the blood but not the energy form. They love us and want us to practice birth control. They love us and want the Hindus to kill their cows. They love us and have a colorless, tasteless powder, which is the perfect synthetic food. Revolutionary, number, uh, revolutionary letter number seven. There are those who can tell you how to make Molotov cocktails, flamethrowers, bombs, whatever you might be needing. Find them and learn. Define your aim clearly. Choose your ammo with that in mind. It is not a good idea to tote a gun or knife unless you are proficient in its use. All swords are two-edged, can be used against you by anyone who can get them away from you. It is possible even on the East Coast to find an isolated place for target practice. Success will depend mostly on your state of mind. Meditate, pray, Make love, be prepared at any time to die. But don't get uptight, the guns will not win this one. They are an incidental part of the action, which we better damn well be good at. What will win is mantras, the sustenance we give to each other, their energy, the energy we plug into, the fact that we touch, share food, the Buddha nature of everyone, friend and foe, like a million earthworms tunneling under this structure, till it falls. Revolutionary letter number eight. Every time you pick the spot for a BN, a demonstration, a march, a rally, you are choosing the ground for a potential battle. 
You are still calling these shots. Pick your Terran with that in mind. Remember the old gang rules. Stick to your neighborhood. Don't let them lure you to Central Park every time. I would hate to stumble body out of that park to find help. Central Park or Fifth Avenue, which would you choose? Go to Levin's with incest, flowers, food, and plastic bag with them cloth in it for tear gas. Wear no jewelry, wear clothes you can move easily in, wear no glasses, contact lenses, earrings for pierced ears are especially heteroses. Try to be clear, in front, what will you do if it comes to trouble? If you're going to try to split stay out of the center, don't stampede or panic others. Don't waver between active and passive resistance. Know your limitations. Be content, neither for yourself nor for any of your brothers. No one way works. It will take all of us shoving at the thing from all sides to bring it down. Revolutionary letter number nine. Advocating the overthrow of government is a crime. Overthrowing it is something else altogether. It is sometimes called revolution. But don't kid yourself, government is not where it's at. It's only a good place to start. Number one, kill head of Dow Chemical. Two, destroy plant. Three, make it unprofitable for them to build again. Namely, destroy the concept of money as we know it. Get rid of interest, savings, inheritance. Pounds money is dated coupons that come in the mail to everyone and are void in 30 days is still a good idea. Or let's start with no money at all and invent it if we need it. Or mimeograph it and everyone print as much as they want and see what happens. Declare a moratorium on debt, the Continental Congress did, on all debts public and private. And no one owns the land. It can be held for use, no man holding more than he can work, himself and family working. Let no one work for another except for love. And what you make above your needs be given to the tribe, the commonwealth. None of us know the answers. Think about these things. The day will come when we have to know the answers. Revolutionary letter number 10. These are transitional years and the dues will be heavy. Change is quick, but revolution will take a while. America has not even begun as yet. This continent is a seed. Revolutionary letter number 11. Drove across San Joaquin Valley with Kirby Doyle, grooving, getting free digger meat for free city convention grooving behind talk of kirby's family been here a long time grooving friendship renewed neat pickup truck we stopped at a gas station man uptight at the sight of us sight of kirby's hair his friendly loose face my hair our dress man surly uptight we drove away brought down across fields of insecticide and migrant workers and man, I said, that cat, so uptight. What's he so uptight about? It's not your hair, not really. It's just what the TV tells him about hippies got him scared. What he reads in his magazines got him scared. We got to come out from behind the image, sit down with him. If he sat down to a beer with you, he'd find a hell of a lot more to say than he'll find with the man who makes your image. He's got nothing in common with the men who run his mind, who tell him what to think of us. Smash the media, I said, and burn the schools so people can meet, can sit and talk to each other, warm and close, no TV image flickering between them. Revolutionary letter number 12. The vortex of creation is the vortex of destruction. The vortex of artistic creation is the vortex of self-destruction. The vortex of political creation is the vortex of flesh destruction. Flesh is in the fire, 
It curls and terribly warps. Fat is in the fire. It drips and sizzling sings. Bones are in the fire. They crack tellingly in subtle hieroglyphs of oracle, charcoal singed, the smell of your burning hair. For every revolutionary must at last will his own destruction, rooted as he is in the past he sets out to destroy. Revolutionary letter number 13. Now let me tell you what is a Brahma Shastra. Brahma Shastra, Hindu weapon of war, near as I can make out, a flying wedge of mind energy hurled at the foe by God or hero, or many heroes hurled at a problem or an enemy cracking it. Brahma Shastra can be made by any or all, can be made by all of us, straight or tripping, thinking together like, all of us stop the war at nine o'clock tomorrow. Each one, each take one soldier, see him clearly, love him, take the gun out of his hand, lead him to a quiet spot, sit him down, sit with him as he takes a joint of Viet Cong grass from his pocket. Brahma Shastra can be made by all of us, tripping together, winter solstice at home or in park, or wandering, sitting with friends, blinds closed or on porch, no be in, no need to gather publicly, just gather spirit, see the forest growing, put back the big trees, put back the buffalo, the grasslands of the Midwest with their herds of elk and deer, put fish in clean Great Lakes, desire that all surface water on the planet be clean again, kneel down and drink from whatever brook or lake you conjure up. Revolutionary letter number 14. Are you prepared to hide someone in your home indefinitely, say two to six weeks, you going out for food, etc., so he never hits the streets, to keep your friends away coolly, so they ask no questions, to nurse him or her as necessary, to know first aid and healing, not to freak out at the sight of torn or half-cooked flesh, to pass him on, a, on at the right time to the next station to cross the Canadian border, with a child so that the three of you look like one family, no questions asked or fewer, to stash letters, guns, or bombs, forget about them till they are called for, to keep your mouth shut, not to trust, even your true love, that is, lay no more knowledge on him than he needs to do his part of it, a kindness we all must extend to each other in this game. Revolutionary letter number 15. When you seize Columbia, when you take, when you seize Paris, take the media, tell the people what you're doing, what you're up to and why, and how you mean to do it, how they can help, keep the news coming, steady. You have 70 years of media conditioning to combat. It is a wall you must get through, somehow, to reach the instinctive man who is struggling like a plant for light or air. When you seize a town, a campus, get hold of the power stations, the water, the transportation, forget to negotiate, Forget how to negotiate. Don't wait for de Gaulle or Kirk to abdicate. They won't. You are not demonstrating. You are fighting a war. Fight to win. Don't wait for Johnson or Humphrey or Rockefeller to agree to your terms. Take what you need. It's free because it's yours. Revolutionary Letter 16. We are eating up the planet. The New York Times takes a forest every Sunday. Los Angeles draws its water from the Sacramento Valley. The rivers of British Columbia are ours, on lease for 99 years. Every large factory is an infringement of our God-given right to light and air. 
to clean and flowing rivers stocked with fish, to the very possibility of life for our children's children, we will have to look carefully, i.e., do we really want, need, electricity, and at what cost in natural resource, human resource? Do we need cars when petroleum pumped from the earth poisons the land around for a hundred years, pumped from the car, poisons the hard pressed cities, or try this statistic. The USA has 5% of the world's people uses over 50% of the world's goods. Our garbage holds matter for survival for uncounted underdeveloped nations. Revolutionary letter number 17. We will all feel the pinch. There will not be a Cadillac and a $40,000 home for everyone. Simply, the planet will not bear it. What there will be is enough food, enough of the necessities. Luxuries will have to go by the board. Even the poorest of us will have to give up something to live free. Revolutionary letter number 18. Let's talk about splitting. Splitting is an art frequently called upon in revolution. Retreat, says the I Ching, must not be confused with flight. And furthermore, frequently it furthers one to have somewhere to go. I.e., know in advance the person's slash place you can go to. Means to get there. Keep money, cash in-house for traveling. An extra set of ID, Robert Williams was warned by his own TV set when the man was coming for him. He had his loot at home. His wife and kids all crossed the country with him into Canada and on to Cuba. It's a good idea to have good working transportation, wheels. One friend has two weeks stashed into his VW bus, food, water, matches, clothing, blankets, gas. He can go at least that long before he hits a town. Can leave at any time. Something to think about. Revolutionary letter number 19 for the Poor People's Campaign. If what you want is jobs for everyone, you are still the enemy. You have not through clearly what that means. If what you want is housing, industry, GE on the Navajo reservation, a car for everyone, garage, refrigerator, TV, more plumbing, scientific, freeways, you are still the enemy. You have chosen to sacrifice the planet for a few years of some science fiction utopia. If what you want still is or can be schools where all our kids are pushed into one shape, are taught it's better to be American than black or Indian or Jap or PR, where Dick and Jane become and are the dream. Do you look like Dick's father? Don't you think your kid secretly wishes you did? If what you want is clinics where the AMA can feed you pills to keep you weak or sterile, shoot germs into your kids while Merck and Co. grows richer. If you want free psychiatric help for everyone so that the shrinks, pimps for this decadence can make it flower for us. If you want, if you still want a piece, a small piece of suburbia, green lawn, laid down by the square foot color TV, whose radiant energy kills brain cells, whose subliminal ads brainwash your children, have taken over your dreams, degrees from universities, which are nothing more than slum landlords, festering sinks of lies, so you too can go forth and lie to others on some greeny campus. Then you are still the enemy. You are selling yourself short. Remember, you can have what you ask for. Ask for everything. Revolutionary letter number 20, poor Huey Newton. 
I will not rest till men walk free and fearless on the earth, each doing in the manner of his blood and tribe, peaceful in the free air, till all can seek unhindered the shape of their thought, no black cloud, fear or guilt between them and the sun, no babies burning, young men locked away, no paper world to come between flesh and flesh in human encounter. Till the young women come into their own, honored and fearless, birthing strong sons, loving and dancing, till the young men can at last lose some of their sternness, return to young men's thoughts, till laughter bounces off our hills and fills our plains. Revolutionary letter number 21. Can you own land? Can you own house? Own rights to others' labor? Stocks or factories or money? loan that interest? What about the yield of same? Crops, autos, airplanes, drop-in bonds. Can you own real estate so others pay you rents? To whom does the water belong? To whom will the air belong as it gets rarer? The American Indians say that a man can own no more than he can carry away on his horse. Revolutionary letter number 22. What do you want your kids to learn? Do you care if they know factoring, chemical formulae, theory of numbers, equations, philosophy, semantics, symbolic logic, Latin, history, so-called, which is merely history of mind of Western man least interesting of numberless manifestations on this planet. Do you care if he learns to eat off the woods, to set a broken arm, to mend his own clothes, cook simple food, deliver a calf or baby? If there are cars, should he not be able to keep his running? How will he learn these things? Will he learn them cut off in a plaster box? encased in a larger cement box called school, dealing with paper from morning till night, grinding no clay or mortar, no pigment, setting no seedlings in black earth come spring? How will he know to trap a rabbit, build a raft, to navigate by the stars or find safe ground to sleep on? What is he doing all his learning years inside as if the planet were no more than a vehicle for carrying our plastic constructs around the sun? Revolutionary letter number 23. A lack of faith is simply a lack of courage. One who says, I wish I could believe that, simply means that he is a coward is pleased to be a spectator on this scene where there is no spectators, where all hands not actually working are working against as they lie idle, folded in lamp or holding newspapers, full of lies or wrapped around steering wheel on one more pleasure trip. Number 24. Have you thought about the American Aborigines who inhabited this continent, cave dwellers, tent people, tree dwellers. Will your great-grandchildren be among them? Will they sell artifacts, abolini or wool to the affluent, highly civilized Africans who come here in the summer? Will they wear buckskin or cotton, link clothes, run down deer, catch fish barehanded, build teepees, hoogans, remember to use the wheel to write, to speak, or simply drum and pipe, smiling. Will your great-grandchildren be among them? Revolutionary letter number 25. Know every way out of your house. 
where it goes, every alley on the block, which backyards connect, which walls are scalable, which bushes will hold a man. Construct at least one man-sized hiding place in your walls. Know for sure which neighbors will let you sneak in the back door and saunter out the front while the man is parked in your driveway or tearing your pad apart. Which neighbors won't be home? Which cellar doors are open? Whom you can summon in your neighborhood to do your errands? Check the block. Set up a getaway while you sit tight inside and your house is watched. Revolutionary letter number 26. Does the end justify the means? There is process, there is no end. There are only means. Each one had better justify itself. To whom? Revolutionary letter number 27. How much can we afford to lose before we win? Can we cut hair? or give up drugs, take job, join Minutemen, marry, wear their clothes, play bingo. What can we stomach? How soon does it leave its mark? Can we, living straight in a straight part of town, still see our people? Can we live if we don't see our people? It is better to lose and win than win and be defeated, said Gertrude Stein. Which would you choose? Revolutionary letter number 28. Oh, my brothers, busted for pot, for looting, for loving, young, beautiful brothers and sisters, for holding out hope, in both hands to the man, enraging him. Oh, my brothers, freaking out this moment, this beautiful summer evening in all the cages of America while the sun goes down on this fabled and holy land. Know that we have this land. We are filling its crevices, its caves and forests, its coastlines and holy places with our mating flesh, with the fierce play of our children, our numbers increasing. We are approaching yourselves to cut you loose, to march triumphant with you, crying out to Matria across the Pacific. Revolutionary letter number 29. Beware of those who say we are the beautiful losers, who stand in their long hair and wait to be punished, who weep on beaches for our isolation. We are not alone. We have brothers in all the hills. We have sisters in the jungles and in the Ozarks. We even have brothers on the frozen tundra. They sit by their fires. They sing. They gather arms. They multiply. They will reclaim the earth. Nowhere we can go, but they are waiting for us. No exile where we will not hear welcome home. Good morning, sister. Let me work with you. Good morning, brother. Let me fight by your side. Revolutionary letter number 30. To those who sold the revolution summer of 68, remember to wear a hat if you have a hat and stick your hair inside it if it's long hair or don't wear shoes if it's snowing and you have shoes. Remember, they buy out all the leaders. Be a leader if you want to be bought out. But remember to tell the truth just before they buy you. Tell the truth loud, and the kids will hear you, not hear your money as it falls on the liquor store counter, day after day. Not hear your dreams of nightmare betrayal and torture. Not hear your Mercedes. They'll hear the truth you spoke. They'll believe you and honor you after you die. Brought down by that CIA bullet you can't avoid just by taking their money. They'll believe you and do what you say, not what you do. Revolutionary letter number 31. Um, this is for another poet ancestor, Amiri Baraka. Um, you may know him as that, but it's dedicated as for Leroy at long last. Not all the works of Mozart worth one human life not all the brocaded of the Patalo Palace. Better we should wear homespun than some in Orlin, some in Thailand silk. The children of Bengal weave gold thread in silk saris, six years old, eight years old for export. They don't sing, the singers are for export. Folkways records. Better we should have all homemade flutes and practice excruciatingly upon them 
100 years till we learn to make our own music. Revolutionary letter number 32. Not Western civilization, but civilization itself is the disease which is eating us. Not the last 5,000 years, but the last 20,000 are the cancer. Not modern cities, but the city. Not capitalism, but ism, art, religion. Once they are separate enough to be seen and named, named art, named religion. Once they are not simply the daily acts of life which bring the rain, bring bread, heal, bring the herds close enough to the hunt, birth the children, simply the acts of song, the acts of power now lost to us these many years. Not killing a few white men will bring back power. Not killing all the white men, but killing the white man in each of us. Killing the desire for brocade, for gold, for champagne brandy, which sends people out of the sun and out of their lives to create commodity for our pleasure. What claim do we have? Can we make on another's time, another's life blood? Show me a city that does not consume the air and water for miles around it. Mohenjo Daro was a blot on the village culture of India. The cities of Egypt sucked the life of millions. Show me an artifact of city which has the power as flesh has power, as spirit of man has power. Revolutionary letter number 33. How far back are we willing to go? That seems to be the question. The more we give up, the more we will be blessed. The more we give up, the further back we go, can we make it under the sky again? In moving tribes that settle, build, move on and build again. Owning only what we carry, do we need the village? Division of labor, a friendly potlatch a couple times a year, or must it be merely a quote unquote cybernetic civilization, which may or may not save the water, but will not show us our root or our original face? Return us to the source. How far back? Forward is back. Are we willing to go after all? Revolutionary letter number 34. Hey man, let's make a revolution. Let's give every man a Thunderbird color TV, a refrigerator, free antibiotics. Let's build apartments with a separate bedroom for every child. Inflatable plastic sofas, vitamin pills with all our daily requirements that come in the mail, free gas and electric and telephone and no rent, why not? Hey man, let's make a revolution. Let's turn off the power, turn on the stars at night, put metal back in the earth, or at least not take it out anymore. Make lots of guitars and flutes, teach the chicks how to heal with herbs. Let's learn to live with each other in a smaller space and build hogans and domes and teepees all over the place. Blow up the petroleum lines, make the cars into flower pots or cultures or live in the bigger ones. Why not? Revolutionary letter number 35. Rise up, my brothers. Do not bow your heads any longer, 
or pray except to the spirit you waken, the spirit you bring to birth. It never was on earth. Rise up, do not droop, smoking hash or opium, dreaming sweetness. Perhaps there will be time for that on the long beaches, lying in love with a few of us who are left. But now the earth cries out for aid. Our brothers and sisters set aside their childhoods. Prepare to fight. What choice have we but join them? In their hands rests the survival of the very planet, the health of the solar system, for we are one with the stars and the spirit we forge. They wait for Christ, Buddha, Krishna, Paracelsus, had but a taste. We must reclaim the planet, reoccupy this ground. The peace we seek was never seen before. The earth belongs at last to the living. Revolutionary letter number 36. Who is the we? Who is the they in this thing? Did we or they kill the Indians? Not me, my people brought here cheap labor to exploit a continent for them. Did we or they exploit it? Do you admit complicity? Say we have to get out of Vietnam. We really should stop poisoning the water, etc. Look closer, look again, secede. Declare your independence. Don't accept a share of the guilt they want to lay on us. Man is innocent and beautiful and born to perfect bliss. They envy. Heavy deeds make heavy hearts, and to them, life is suffering. Stand clear. Revolutionary letter number 37. Geography, USA. The east edge is megalopolis is Washington, D.C., spread out 800 miles, ecology totally fucked up. Even the brothers there do not completely believe that they can win. The West Edge is languorous with wealth. Their Venison is brought down from the hills and figs and wine from abandoned orchards. The sisters raise their bastard young on welfare checks and rotten sprayed vegetables. Talk free, talk end of money. For them, the war is over, all the wars. The middle is hardly heard from yet. It is stirring, stretching muscles, bare bones of continent eternal. Progression of young, barbarians, huge boiling meat fed hordes who can't be taught. There's anything to lose. Angelic herds whose unholy yell is gonna shake us all. Revolutionary letter number 38. Not people's park, people's planet. Can they fence that one in, bulldoze it, 4 a.m.? Revolutionary letter number 39. Let me tell you, brothers, that on May 30th, I went to one of our life festivals. Dropped acid in the Tompkins Square Park with my brothers and sisters. Danced in the sun. The stars came out and the pigs drove around us in a circle where we stood touching each other and loving. Then I went home and made love like a flower, like two flowers opening to each other. We were the jewel in the lotus. Next morning, still high, wandered uptown to Natural History Museum. And there in a room of Peruvian fauna, birds of paradise, I saw as a past like the dinosaurs, saw birds pass from the earth and flowers. Most trees and small creatures, chipmunks and rabbits and squirrels and delicate wildflowers saw the earth bare and smooth, austerely plastic and efficient men feeding hydroponically, working like ants thought flatly without regret. I have unlearned regret. What beautiful creatures used to live on the earth.
I think you're muted, Ash. Revolutionary letter number 40. If the power of the word is anything, America, your oil fields burning, your cities in ruins, smoldering, pillaged by children, your cars broken down at a standstill, choking the roads, your citizens standing beside them, bewildered, or choosing a packload of objects, what they can carry away. If the power of the world lives, of the word lives, America, your power lines down, eagle-eyed lines of electric, of telephone, towers of radio transmission, toppled and rankling in the fields, setting the hay ablaze, your newspapers useless, your populace illiterate, wiping their asses with them. If the word has power, you shall not stand, America. The wilderness is spreading from the parks you have fenced it into already. Desert flows through Las Vegas. The sea licks its chops at the oily edges of Los Angeles. The camels are breeding. The bears, the elk are increasing. So are the Indians and the very poor. Do you stir in your sleep, America? Do you dream of your power pastel colored oil tanks from sea to shining sea? Sleep well, America. We stand by your bedside. The word has power. The chant is going up. Revolutionary letter number 41. Revolution, a turning as the earth turns among planets, as the sun turns round some darker star. The galaxy describes a yin yang spiral in the ether. We turn from dark to light turn faces of pain and fear, the dawn awash among them. Revolutionary letter number 42. What is this overpopulation problem? Have you looked at it clearly? Do you know 10 times as much land needed if we eat hamburger instead of grain? We can all fit, not hungry, if we minimize our needs. Rip off large, empty ranches, make the food nutritious. Chemical fertilizers have to go. Nitrates poison the water. Large-scale machine farming has to go. The soil is blowing away 300 years to make one inch of topsoil. Do you know? 40% of the women of Puerto Rico already sterilized? Transistor radios, the sterilization bonus in India? All propaganda aimed at the non-white and poor white populations? Something like 90% of the land of USA belongs to 5% of the population. How can they hold on? when the hordes of the infants of the very poor grow up, grow strong. Revolutionary letter number 43. I dreamed of a world without the sick and the lowly, Yevtushenko. The map, first goal is health. Strong bodies make strong spirit, Venceremos brigade. Coming back from Cuba, discover they know how to breathe. They can get up with the sun, first thing, to zap the sugar habit, get rid of meat and heavy drugs, to eat no chemicals, no processed food, first step, to find out what health feels like, even keel, tireless energy pouring steady through, then prana, vital energy moving smooth through all your flesh, Next goal, release. Sex force, strong. Flesh becomes bright flesh. Anger becomes Buddha's anger, a steady roar. Righteous, behind your action, not spasmodic. Threatens no self-destruction. Loose touch on brothers and sisters. Loose force and contain it. Holy power to build up or pull down. Revolutionary letter number 44. For my sisters, 
as we know that blood is burnt, agony breaks open doors, as we bend graciously beneath burdens, undermine like rain or earthworms, as our cries heal to the cries of the newborn, as we hear the plea in the voices around us, not words of passion or cunning, discount anger or pride, grow strong in our own strength, women's alchemy, quick arms to pull down walls, we liberate out of our knowledge, labor, sucking babes, we liberate and nourish as the earth. Revolutionary letter number 45. And it seems to me the struggle has to be waged on a number of different levels. They have computers to cast the I Ching for them, but we have Yarrow stocks and the stars. It is a battle of energies, of force fields, what the newspapers call a battle of ideas. To take hold of the magic any way we can and use it in total faith, to seek help in realms we have been taught to think of as mythological, to contact all levels of one's own being and loose the forces therein, always seeking in this to remain psychically inconspicuous on the not so unlikely chance that those we have thought of as instigators are just the front men for a gang of black magicians based somewhere else in space to whom the whole of earth is a colony to exploit. The Nova mob not so far out as you think. Best not to place bodies in the line of fire, but to seek other means. Study the Sioux, learn not to fuck up as they did Another ghost dance started on H Street in 1967. We ain't seen the end of it yet. Missionary letter number 46. And as you learn the magic, learn to believe it. Don't be surprised when it works. You undercut your power. I think I'm also 47. Revolutionary letter number 47. To be free, you've got to be free. We've got to be free of any idea of freedom. Today, the State Department lifted the ban on travel to China and closed Merritt College. Revolutionary letter number 48. Be careful. With what relief do we fall back on the tale so often told in revolutions that now we must organize, obey the rules, so that later we can be free? It is the point at which the revolution stops, to be carried forward later and in another country. This is the pattern, but we can break the pattern. Learn now we see with all our skin, smell with our eyes too, Sense and sex are boundless, and the call is to be boundless in them. Make the joy now that we want. No shape for space and time now, but the shapes we will. Number 49. Machinery. Extended hands of man doing man's work. Diverted rivers washing my clothes. Diverted fire dancing in wires making light and heat. To see it thus is to see it. Even diverted rivers must resume their course and fire consume, whatever name you call it. Number 50. As soon as we submit to a system based on causality, linear time, we submit again to the old values, plunge again into slavery, be strong. We have the right to make the universe we dream. No need to fear science, groveling apology for things as they are. All power to joy, which will remake the world. Revolutionary letter number 51. Don't give up the 11 o'clock news for Chairman Mao. Don't switch from one programming to another. Hang loose, Mao is young, 50 years ago and in China. Revolutionary letter number 52. San Francisco note. 
I think I'll stay on this earthquake fault near the still active volcano in this armed fortress facing a dying ocean and covered with dirt while the streets burned up and the rocks fly and pepper gas lays us out because that's where my friends are. You fuckers, not that you know what that means. Ain't gonna cop to it. Ain't gonna be scared no more. We all know the same songs, mushrooms, butterflies. We all have the same babies. Dig it. The woods are big. Revolutionary letter number 53. How to become a walking alchemical experiment. Eat mercury in wheat and fish. Breathe sulfur fumes everywhere. Take plenty of macrobiotic salt and cook the mixture in the heat of an atomic explosion. Revolutionary letter number 54. It takes courage to say no. No to canned corn and instant mashed potatoes. No to Rice Krispies. No to Special K. No to margarine, mono and diglycerides, NSDA for coloring, causing cancer. No to white bread bleached with nerve gas, Wonder Bread. No to everything fried in hardened oil with silicates. No to once so delicious salami now red with sodium nitrate. No to processed cheeses. No, no again to irradiated bacon, pink phosphorescent ham, dead plastic pasteurized milk. No to chocolate pudding like grandma never made. No thanks to Coca-Cola. No to freshness preserves, dough conditioners. No potassium sorbate. No aluminum silicate. No, BHA, BHT, no, diethyl propyl glycerate. No more ice cream? Not with embalming fluid. Goodbye, potato chips, peanut butter, jelly, jolly white sugar. No more DES all American steaks or hamburgers either. Goodbye, frozen fish, dipped and coated with Oreo mycin. Fried eggs over easy with hormones, penicillin, and speed. Goodbye, frozen fish, dipped and coated with carnation instant breakfast, Nestle's quick, Fritos, goodbye, your labels are very confusing. All I can say is what my daughter, age six, once said to me, if I can't pronounce it, maybe I shouldn't eat it. Or Dick Gregory, coming out of a 20-day fast, the people of America are controlled by the food they eat. Revolutionary letter number 55. All through America, all I see and find is Indian America, the forms and shapes of Great Turtle Island. Revolutionary letter number 56. The forms proliferate. As we spin further from the light, our bodies sprout new madnesses congenital pale disease, like new plants on the edge of radioactive craters. We sprout new richness of design, Baroque apologies for Kali Yuga, till Kether calls us home, hauls in the galaxies like some big fish. Revolutionary letter number 57. Notes toward an American history. Over and over, I've looked for the picture in the cloth, man standing idle and tall against horizon. Savage landscape, we stare, poverty struck at New England pewter in farmhouse window. Quote Adams, Jefferson, Hugh map of the sacred meadow. This was the land we were promised, wasn't it? Is Fresno, New Jerusalem? Where is Dallas? How would Olson, Pound, Tom Paine explain Petaluma? Over and over, Kirby Doyle, mad, tells the tale of his grandfather walking out of the desert, his wife and two sons waiting in a wagon, he had the mule, and the boats in Gloucester, Newfoundland, and Greece, the same. 
the wood carved in Alaska and New Guinea. Over and over, we seek that savage man, sufficient and generous. We find Rockefeller, Nixon, sad letters of Jefferson mourning the ravaging of mound builders' land, requesting his daughter not to neglect her French. We, over and over, seeking line and form, gold leaf as in Siena, outline as Blake, we sit on shifting ground at the edge of this ocean, as far as Europe as you can get, and watch the hills flicker like dream skin. Revolutionary letter number 58. What we need to know is laws of time and space that they never dream of. Seek out the ancient texts, alchemy, homeopathy, secret charts of early Rosicrucians, Jordanisti, Grok synchronicity, Jung barely scratched the surface of. Look to the heresies of Europe for blood root, remnants of pre-colonized, pre-Roman Europe, insistent, hopeful resurgence of communards, free love and joy, in God all things are common, secret celebration of ancient season feasts and moons, rewrite the calendar. Head on war is the mistake we make time after time. There is a way around it, way to outflank technology, short circuit energy crisis, retreat and silence, cunning, courage, and love. Revolutionary letter number 59. Look to the cities, see how urban renewal tears out the slums from the heart of town, forces expendable poor to the edges to some remote and indefensible piece of ground, Hunter's Point, Lower East Side, Columbia Point. Out of sight, out of mind, and when bread riot comes, conjured by cutting welfare, rising prices, the man won't hesitate to raise those ghettos, and few will see, and few will object. Revolutionary letter number 60. First observable effects of so-called energy crisis, fall 1973. One, offshore drilling renewed, Santa Barbara and elsewhere. We can expect new offshore wells to be opened regardless of consequences. Two, price of crude oil shoots sky high, making the extraction of shale oil feasible, profitable, which shale oil territory has been prepared for exploitation by forcing beef prices up, advocating beef boycotts, forcing smaller ranches towards bankruptcy. Three, Peabody Coal plans to occupy Cheyenne land on legal grounds they are incapable of exploring its natural resource, i.e. don't wait to extract minerals at the cost of all else. Four, grim austerity consciousness, empty shelves and stiff upper lip, and plenty of hoarding, reminiscent of early 40s, conditioned reflex, right psychological climate for World War III. Five. Of course, police and military will have enough gas. And how will you like to be stationary populace in the grip of a mobile army? Revolutionary letter number 61. Take a good look at history, the American myth, check, sellout, of revolution by the founding fathers, constitution written by a bunch of gangsters to exploit a continent is what Charles Olson told me. Check, Shays Rebellion, Aaron Burr, Nathan Hale, who wrote the history books where you went to school. Check, Civil War, maybe Industrial North needed cheap labor, South had it. How many sincere movement people, writers and radicals, played into their hands? Check, Haymarket Trial, it broke the back of strong, wobbly movement. How many jailed, fined, killed to stop that one? What's happening to us has happened a few times before. Let's change the script. What did it take to stop the Freedom Riders? What have we actually changed? Month I was born, they were killing onion pickers in Ohio. Month that I write this, nearly 40 years later, they're killing UFWs in the state I'm trying somehow to live in. Let's rewrite the history books. 
history repeats itself only if we let it. Number 62, check science. Whose interest does it serve? Whose need to perpetrate? Mechanical dead, exploitable, universe instead of living cosmos. Whose dream those hierarchies, planet and stars, blindly obeying fixed laws as they desire us to, to stay in place? Whose interest to postulate? Man's recent descend from unthinking animals, our repeatable genocentric isolation, long voice in the stars. What point in this cosmology but to drain hope of contact or change, oppressing us with reason? Um, I just want to make a quick note that I am I changed two things that I didn't feel comfortable saying, but because it's the last letter, I just wanted to say that. Revolutionary letter number 63. Free Julian Beck, free Timothy Leary, free seven million starving in Pakistan, free all political prisoners, free Angela Davis, free Soledad Brothers, free Martin Sobel, free Sacco and Vansetti, free Big Bill Hayward, free Sitting Bull, free Crazy Horse, free all political prisoners, free Billy the Kid, free Jesse James, free all political prisoners, free Nathan Hale. <laughs> wow, sorry, <laughs> it's too emotional suddenly. <laughs> Free all political prisoners, free Nathan Hale, free Joan of Arc, free Galileo and Bruno and Eckhart, free Jesus Christ, free Socrates, free all political prisoners, free all political prisoners. All prisoners are political prisoners. Every pot smoker, a political prisoner. Every holdup man, a political prisoner. Every forger, a political prisoner. Every angry kid who smashed a window, a political prisoner. Every whore, pimp, murderer, a political prisoner. Every pederast, dealer, drunk driver, burglar, poacher, striker, strike breaker, rapist, polar bear at San Francisco Zoo, political prisoner, ancient wise turtle at Detroit Aquarium, political prisoner, flamingos dying in Phoenix Tourist Park, political prisoners, otters in Tucson Desert Museum, political prisoners, elk in Wyoming grazing behind barbed wire, political prisoners, prairie dogs poisoned in New Mexico, war casualties. Mass grave of Wyoming bald eagles, a battlefield. Every kid in school, a political prisoner. Every lawyer in his cubicle, a political prisoner. Every doctor brainwashed by AMA, a political prisoner. Every housewife, a political prisoner. Every teacher lying through sad teeth, a political prisoner. Every indigenous person on reservation, a politi political prisoner. Every black man, a political prisoner. Every queer hiding in bar, a political prisoner. Every junkie shooting up in John, a political prisoner. Every woman, a political prisoner. Every woman, a political prisoner. You are political prisoner, locked in tense body. You are political prisoner, locked in stiff mind. You are political prisoner, locked to your parents. You are political prisoner, locked to your past. Free yourself, free yourself. I am political prisoner locked in anger habit. I am political prisoner locked in greed habit. I am political prisoner locked in fear habit. I am political prisoner locked in dull senses. I am political prisoner locked in numb flesh. Free me, free me, help to free me. Free yourself, help to free me. Free yourself, help to free me. Free Barry Goldwater. Help to free me. Free Governor Wallace. Free President Nixon. Free J. Edgar Hoover. Free them. Free yourself. Free them. Free yourself. Free yourself. Free them, free yourself, help to free me, free us, dance. May 1968 to December 1971.